All right, guys, we're back on the LS cam swap in the C10. Um, I got the balancer off right here. Uh, I got, I borrowed a special uh, service tool set for uh, Gen 3 engines. Yeah, it's the same, pretty much the same thing as what this thing is. Um, I believe they consider this a Gen 3. I just know it's an LQ4. Um, we're gonna pull this front cover off. We have to take two bolts out on the bottom front cover bolts once we get those out I got these doubles here they're little fiberglass doubles that I uh, made up from some old snow snow where you mark the end of your driveways or whatever for snow plowing um, I will once I get the cam on bolted from the timing set we'll spin the cam around to get the lifters up in the trays once the lifters are up in the trays we'll put the doubles in to hold the lifters and then we'll be able to pull the cam out but I'm gonna get this timing cover off Alright, so I took and I screwed in the crank bolt lightly. Um, it didn't bottom out or anything before it got there. The reason I did that is because I'm going to line up this mark with the top so I know where I pulled it off. I don't know where the bottom mark is according. I'm just going to line this mark up either straight down or straight up and down wherever I decide so I can, so I can um, verify when I put the chain back on and it, the uh, upper gear back on that it's right where it should be and it's in time so we'll see how this goes looks like I'm a little That looks pretty much like center to me. I'm gonna take and grab, I'll go a little bit yet. I'm gonna take and grab a paint pen and then dab this gear in here that you guys can't see. I'm gonna dab this gear in here, it's kinda hard to see and dab this gear because those are the two gears that line up so then I can verify my mark is lined up with where it was when I took it out um, I don't know how these LS's are if they have the mark on the top or if they have the mark on the bottom here top here or bottom gear top here I don't know how they do that but I'm just gonna make sure that it's lined up with something that I can guarantee it's lined up with when I pull it out so when I put the new one in everything is in time so I'm going to grab a paint marker and mark that. Then when I come back, we're going to pull that top gear off and get that cam out. All right, so I marked everything. I got it marked. I know where I'm at. Um, I left the spark plugs in mostly for this reason. Uh, when I go to pull a, the cam bolts out here, I want to be able to actually loosen them without turning the motor over. So leaving the spark plugs in, the cylinders build compression if you try and turn it over. So makes it a little harder to turn over when you're down here, but it, it helps you out in the long run. So I'm gonna crack all these loose. And once I got them loose, I'll uh, take and turn them out by hand so I don't damage anything. I know I just made the mistake of doing this, so you guys shouldn't, but don't ever set your bolts up there so they have a chance of falling in the intake. I'm going to set these down and then take that gear off. So... Bring the gear down. Take the, lift the chain over the gear. Set the chain down. The chain positioning doesn't matter. It's the gear positioning that matters. My mark is there so I know where that's at. This I'll set up here so it don't get the mark wiped off. Now I'm going to grab a water pump bolt. Which is the same thread as the cam. I'm going to twist this in here. I'm going to get grab a second one. Twist these in here quite a ways. Spin the cam over. 
driving around to uh, get the lifters all up in their oars. Then I'm going to take the cam plate off. here make this a little easier cam plate on uh, to get the cam cam out Careful not to drop any bolts in your oil pan or your uh, SOL. Cam plate off here. Whoops. Carefully put that up there. And I'm going to make sure my lifters are all up in the trays. Spin the cam around. Make sure they're all up in the trays. Then I'm going to carefully take these doubles. I got to fish them through the right spot in the grill. I really should have took the grill out, but. Just at the right angle that I can't uh, get the double in here. We'll try this again. It's kind of a pain. I should have took the grill out. I might have to here. Keeps hitting my stool on the back side. Might need some smaller dowels. Let me try the other side. Make sure it's not just a fluke. Well, my dowels were too big because I don't I won't be able to showcase this, but the hole, the hole for the dowel or for the oil galleys here. And the lifters run Siamese with the dowel or with the hole. So if you when you shove the dowel in, it's gonna hold the lifter up alongside of it. Um, I spun the cam and it pushed the lifters up in the trays this long. It's been sitting here, I've been getting everything ready because I have a feeling I was gonna have to do it this way. Um, I'm gonna take my chances. You might see me get really teed off and have to pull this motor apart. Um, but I'm gonna take the cam out without dowels, so. I don't think this motor's got a whole lot of miles on it, so I'm hoping those dowels will stay. They've been staying it for this long, so I'm going to uh, take in, I got the two water pump bolts there. I'm gonna put two water pump bolts in the cam over here. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put two water pump bolts in, whoa, that one looks really dirty, holy man. Oh, my rig. I got it right here in my pocket. Clean this bolt off once. Put these, put two bolts in this cam here as a little uh, way to guide the cam in. I got my oil ready so I can oil it down as I'm putting it in. Sorry if the light isn't too good here. I got to get a white light situation worked out. Um, so let's go pull that cam out. All right, so uh, I'm going to put the uh, cam button on here first. I left my bolts on there to help me align the cam button or to hold it up there actually. 
just make this a little easier for because it's kind of a one one-handed project one bolt in at a time try not to drop any these in by hand we'll get these running by hand get the gear on here um, with the chain and stuff in the right position then we will uh, set some push rods in make sure the uh, lifters go down and they ride on the cam lobe So I uh, almost got these in here. I'm just going to snug them up. I'll uh, torque them later. I just want to make sure my lifters didn't fall. I'm sure there's a torque pattern. I'm just giving them a good snug. There. Cam is where it should be there. Pull the pull the water pump bolts out once you get the water pump bolts out we'll uh, get this thing bolted up leave that one just barely in there I gotta sit this down all right so now we got our gear Line it up with the dowel here once. I know the chain is on there, but I want to uh, spin it, get this cam where it should be. The cam's where it should be. I'll set this water pump pump down before I drop everything. chain down there and my fat fingers can't grab it. Alrighty, so I fished the chain out of there. It didn't take too long. I probably could have done that on camera, but I didn't want to bore you guys. I'm sure this is going to not be an easy task. I'm trying to line this up. cam bolt in there to pull a pull a cam back out because it slid in a little there it went on the dowel it's on the cam bolt those two are lined up like they should be get this one screwed in as soon as you can so it doesn't come back off the, the cam dowel Alright, so I'm going to apply a little bit of silicone in these corners here. That way when the two cut, where the two surfaces meet, we have a nice bond. Um, if I have too much or any excess, because you know how silicone works, I'll probably just dab it around, but I'll try and get a nice bead here. I'll start on this side. So I applied a little bit of silicone here along the along the edges where the two covers or where the two surfaces are going to meet. I'm going to grab the cover and the bolt. Along with the gasket, I, I wiped them all down. I'm reusing the old gasket. Should be no no issues with that.
So these covers are really nice. They have, I gotta grab the light, gotta grab the light here. So these covers are really nice. They have little seals so you can push the bolts in and the bolts will all be held in by the cover gasket. So I'm gonna get all the bolts, all the bolts in the cover here. Once I get all the bolts in the cover, we will uh, put the cover on. Turn this around, make it a little bit easier. Two more on the bottom. I think I'm so one thing I just one thing I just noticed that I want to make you guys aware of. Make sure you check your cover. The loop is supposed to go over here. I got the gasket on wrong. I'm gonna pull the gasket off and flip it over real quick. All right, now that I got the cover on right, I got my bolts back in here and we're gonna put this thing back on now. I'm gonna start with just threading the top two bolts for now. I'm gonna grab my lock. I always do that. I grab the, the bolts I'm gonna need to do everything and try and work with all of them in my hand, but I'm gonna grab my, my lock extension here and make sure all of them start once they're all started we'll uh, push the cover flat okay they're all started push the, push the cover flat like that and then I'm gonna start down here I'm gonna start down here by the oil pan where that sealer is probably be easier to use a small electric impact I don't want to use the, the big half inch drive I have because you know how you get when you know uh, use power tools the guy tends to get a little trigger happy so I'll make sure that cover is nice and nice and flat against the oil pan all I, all I did to do that was just push down as I was snugging up this bottom bolt. I'll snug them up with a wrench too. I'm just snugging up my hand so it'll help hold it in place. There, that one's down. That one's down. Alright, I put the wrench on here. She's going the right way. Snug up them two. Now, before you get them too tight, you want to make sure you put your take your bottom bolts from the pan up and run those in before you get the other ones too tight. You have to bear with me because I kind of gotta reach down in here, but find the find the holes again. Because you want to make sure you double see I think I got this one got this one too tight now you want to double double up on it and pull down and towards the block at the same time when you're doing this to make sure that cover seals tight um, now I know they have all the alignment tools for this um, process oh shoot I accidentally ran that bolt back out they have all the alignment tools for this when you're put, putting the engine together um, but everything is together this we just pulled the cover off so we don't need to realign everything we just got to make sure it's lined up with the block and the pan so I'm gonna I'm gonna tighten these bolts to pull it down and then start from the bottom up with these bolts and we'll come back all right so now I got the balancer and the uh, installer tool uh, this is just a press fit there's no pin or key that needs to be lined up so it can pretty much go on however so I'll get it started here by my hand make sure it's on there straight
hopefully this works. It looks like someone someone bent this uh, tool at one point in time. I got the correct wrench on here now um, and you just turn this nut in until it presses all the way in um, this is a slow way to do it I've uh, when I did the first cam in here before I had the motor in a truck we actually uh, heated the, the balancer until it was like cherry red and then slid it on which that's the that's the easier way to do it but this way it works too, it just takes a heck of a lot longer. All right, so uh, we're kind of switching gears here. Um, I don't have a water pump gasket, so I can't put the water pump on. But uh, I got the spring compressor tool and then the cylinder hole tool. Um, Part number is 1970. This thing you can find pretty much anywhere on eBay, Amazon, all that stuff. So I'm gonna put my air fitting in here, get this opened up. I'm gonna get this uh, locked up on here, make sure that tool works and functions properly. Um, uh, we won't take any springs off or anything like that because obviously I'm not gonna let the cylinder hold with air. Uh, I'm just going to get it threaded in there and get the tool all set up and ready to go so I know how to use it when I get my springs in. Uh, other than that, if I had water pump gaskets, we could throw the whole front assembly together. Um, but I don't. So I'm going to have to wait on that. I'll be able to get gaskets tomorrow. I'll probably run to town and get some. Um, once I get those, I'll be able to put the water pump, the alternator, power steering assembly, the radiator back in, all that stuff. But um, I think I'm going to order the intake tonight. Get that ordered. I'm going to go with the Holly single plane split design, big intake. So hopefully that'll get enough air and fuel in this thing with that big cam. Once that stuff is taken care of and this thing is fired up and running good, we will uh, get it running good, get it up to temperature and stuff. Maybe work on tuning the carp if we can. Um, we won't be able to drive it obviously, but once that's done, then we'll go on the bottom side of this thing and tear into the transmission and get that thing out of the way. I believe I'm going to have to change the drive shaft a little bit. so. That'll be interesting. I don't know about the tail shaft as far as position. I don't know if I'll have to change that or not, but we will find out. But for now, let me get this uh, spring compressor tool mocked up and figured out so I can show you guys what that's all about. And then you'll have to stay tuned for how to change valve springs, but let's get it mocked up. Well, it looks like uh, it's probably a good thing that the uh, valve springs didn't come in because this tool I ordered is definitely the cheap one when it said it was the more better one. Um, it just doesn't, I don't know how well you can see this, but this rod should be pretty much lined up with the spring. So when the tool comes down, it, it pushes both springs theoretically like this. That's another thing. It's not wide enough to go on both of the, over the keepers. It's like a hair too big are too small it doesn't go over to retainers I mean so even if it was lined up it would be a fighting battle the way it is so I don't know what I'm gonna do other than I got a couple days till the valve spring show up so I can probably go on summit and order an expensive one and uh, next day shipping and such to have that in in time so I think that's what I'm gonna have to do but I'm pretty happy with what I got done today. I showed you guys a pretty in-depth um, sort of tutorial on how to change that cam. We 
we got that Texas Speed Torker V4 cam in there. So that's pretty cool. I can't wait to hear that sucker run. But in the next video, we're going to change valve springs, put the front accessories on, get the radiator on, get everything assembled as much as possible. Um, I'm hoping by then I will be confidently saying I'm waiting for the intake, but who knows. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, hit that post notification bell so you can see every time I post a video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.